Pete Sparrow versus Richard Lambert at the front of the grid. Even those that have qualified a little bit further down can still gain places. Uh, and amongst them, Mark Norden on the third row, former race engineer for John Bincliffe's touring car team. Indeed, Mark Norden, if you go back to about the year 2000, we did a race at the BTCC in Class B, as it then was, in the Nissan Primera, down to the chicane they come. He is one to watch. You can see the two-tone blue on the inside of row three of the grid. Now, rolling start. The cars will come out of the chicane, and their drivers will suffer from whiplash as the cars suddenly surge away, it says here. There is going to be very little discernible difference other than once they come out of Redgate and their feet are nailed to the floor, they're pretty much flat out for a full lap. Here they come. Safety car peels in. The 2CVparts.com trophy race gets underway. One car bogs down at the back, and Pete Sparrow it is that makes a really good start. He leads on the way down towards Redgate. Going with him is Richard Lambert, and Liam Davis tries to go with them as well as they head out towards Redgate. Look at that being squeezed onto the grass there. Ainsley Bouncefield, all four wheels onto the grass. Well, 2CVs are good at going across fields, aren't they? So he's able to bounce back onto the road, and a real squeeze was given to him there by Richard Lambert. So Pete Sparrow flies through Redgate. Sparrow leads the way. Everybody else trying to be second. Yep, never underestimate the start of a 2CV race. So we've got our camera car Sparrow. I'm sure we'll go to that at some point during this race. Um, and just look at the action already. They're going to be slipstreaming each other. They're going to be barging each other. You know, they're not proud. They're not shy. And um, they haven't got much power. So they really do need to keep the momentum going through this uh, through this Donington Park flowing circuit. They are 99% flat out all the way in fourth gear for all of the lap, pretty much, apart from the chicane. So. Um, Sammy, who's partnering the, the, the leading car at the moment, who will be out at the second race, she literally just says she'd just chuck it in and be brave, basically. So she does quite a lot of the engines, I think, for the, for the championship as well. So she's an engine tuner and very into the, the 2CV fraternity. Sammy Fritchley, that is, who's one to watch in race two, are problems for the reigning champion, Alec Graham, in the pit lane. Now, that, I think, was the car that got bogged down and therefore had to head for the pit lane, but that's a real drama to start the championship season. That's a real shame, that, because this um, particular car, and with um, Alec Graham as well in the, in the driving seat there, has actually won the 24-hour race three times on the trot. So a real shame for him to, um, to start this Donington Park Motors TV weekend in the pit lane. Race leaders are nose to tail. For third, they're three wide, virtually coming into the chicane for one of the few parts of the circuit where you do brake. Right, then left, lots of curb being used. 43, look, comes out of the chicane. Richard Lambert from the front row. He's lost out on the first lap. Ian Davis up alongside him as the leaders come by. Pete Sparrow leads the way. Second is Ainsley Bousfield. And up to third from the third row is Mark Norden. And then fourth is Liam Davis. And fifth is Richard Lambert. And in sixth spot, Wayne Cowling. Look at this great clump of cars all diving down towards Redgate. On the inside of that, number two, Wayne Cowling looking for a way past Richard Lambert. Up front, though, Pete Sparrow cannot get away, can he? No, and it's all about trying to judge, you know, they're, they're literally all of them in a nice line as they go through Craner Curves, and um, car number 80 in second place at the moment of um, Bousfield is just stuck into the toe. So, leading car now, literally lift off, bang on the power again, they just have to absolutely chuck the car in, using as much road as possible on the outer edge. Because they're so underpowered, or because they haven't got much power, they really do need to use every inch of this tarmac circuit that we've got here today at Donington. So tight up to the inside, absolutely flat to the floor, and we're going to get to a peak of 80 miles an hour, believe it or not, down the back straight. So hopefully we can stay with this for a little bit longer. Again, flat out through McLean's, and, um, you know, the drivers really are trying. They're struggling very, very hard at that wheel to try and keep the balance of the car right and to keep momentum. So the back end just coming out there again and you can't hear the engine really lifting off at all so peak 80 miles an hour just as they go over this crest 80 miles an hour joking apart it's all about keeping the momentum up isn't yes. it so you cannot afford to make a mistake you cannot afford to lift this straight must feel like it's going on forever yeah well that's it's the fastest they get pretty much they don't even really get to 80 miles an hour at snetterton which is a very very long uh, famous for its long straight so uh, they love that the fact that it's going downhill so great battle from the two leaders that we can see here We've done two laps in a 20-minute race at Donington, and Pete Sparrow leads the way. In second place, Ainsley Bowsfield, but then in third, Mark Norden, who is closing up a little bit. Fourth and fifth, nose to tail. Liam Davis just ahead of Wayne Cowling. And there's another good fight here, look, 36, which for this race is Carol Wills, looking to try to gain ground, possibly going through Redgate. Steve Walford was ahead and then ran wide and more dirt is kicked up. The cars go down through the Craner curves. 
Yep, um, I'm going to put a, a, a bet on early on Norden. Norden used to look after me in the Clio's at Binkcliffe a few years ago before I went into the touring cars. And Norden's a very aggressive driver, knows his stuff, really does understand the technician part of the car. So um, Norden be, be looking forward to seeing him in third place at the moment, catch these two that are squabbling and, and getting sort of tripping over themselves, really. Uh, Pete Sparrow, multiple champion, but he cannot get away. Here they come through McLean's corner. A man in third place, Mark Norden, then with the road to himself. He doesn't have to think about what's going on behind. He can just concentrate on catching the leaders. Fourth and fifth, Liam Davis ahead of Wayne Cowling in car two. And sixth, Richard Lambert, second on the grid. He's gone backwards and actually is going to be under pressure before long, I would have thought, because as they go now through Coppice, Matthew Hollis is joining in in number 10. And look at this, four of them absolutely together. Bouncing over the curb there, 55. Steve Walford in the red car, bouncing his way through Coppice. Doesn't face him at all. No, but uh, the suspension definitely had to work hard there, but you'll, you'll see that he, he won't get a good run down the back straight there. He won't get to the peak of 80 miles an hour, which is their highlight throughout the year at Donington Park to get to that speed, um, because he took the tighter line, bogged the car down, the suspension had to work overtime. And um, what's the 2CB's famous for going over a ploughed field, isn't it? With a load of eggs in it. That's right. So definitely some smashed eggs on that, um, that move at Coppice. Into the race, albeit late, comes Alec Graham, and he has joined just ahead of the race leaders. It's going to be fascinating now to see his pace relative to them, to see whether the gremlins are now fixed. Also, the best lap of the race has just been done by Mark Norden, so he's closing up on that leading pair. Won't be long, I think, before we get three for the lead. So ignore the car at the front. He's joined in late from the pits there, Alec Graham. So what's going on behind that's the fascination as now Mark Norden starts to reel in the top two. Pete Sparrow leads in the red car, cannot get away. Now, that wasn't done accidentally, was it? Let's release you just as the leaders are coming by, and let's use this maybe as a test session to see where we're going to be for the race a bit later on. So, um, I get in front he, of the cameras. Yes. He's a, he's a, he's a canny, canny old fox, um, Mr. Graham, so um, he'll be just um, up for just having a bit of a laugh, really, but won't try and get in their way too much, but just be judging what the pace of the leaders are. Now he's sorted that problem out, hopefully. Yeah, he's let them go, hasn't he? And Ainsley Bouncefield up the inside there, trying to challenge on the run to Coppice. Mark Norden in his only race of the day because the car is a shared car so he has to give way to David Watson for race two he's done the fastest lap he's creeping up onto the tail of the top two and he's still got 13 minutes of the race remaining yeah I did say that Norden is an aggressive driver he's got his head down he's got clean air which isn't helping him that much but hopefully Graham can maybe help him and sort of suck him down the straight as it were and use the the, the, the air to sort of build a bit of a gap to, to catch up to the leaders one parked on the grass, going no further. Leaders come through the chicane. Pete Sparrow in his only race because it's a shared car. Ainsley Bouffield in his only race because it's a shared car. So both of them want to win this. They don't get a second chance today. Over the timing line comes Sparrow. Now that lap is a 46-2. He is 6,000 slower than Bouffield and quicker than either of them is Mark Norden, who runs fourth in the gaggle, third in the race. And look behind him, side by side for fourth, coming down towards Redgate. Wayne Cowling just ahead when they went over the line. Pete Sparrow knows how to win in one of these cars, though, doesn't he? The gap is narrowing, not only between first and second, and it wasn't very big to begin with, but it's also coming down second to third. If Mark Norden can get past Alec Graham, life will be a whole lot easier. Yeah, so Alec Graham, the car in third, the red car that you can see in third at the moment with the Union Jack on the front, shouldn't actually be there. He's been in the pit, so he's let Norden through. Norden back end of the 2CV coming out through Old Hairpin. You, they just love driving these things, even though people do um, sort of take the mickey a little bit by being underpowered and being a Citroen 2CV. The racing is fantastic, and they're proving that here today. It really is really wheel-to-wheel -wheel close action. Graham, I think, will just tag with these four now and, um, and stick with them. So it's building up, isn't it, as they go past the stricken car of Mick Rhodes over at Schrott's Curve. It was two for the lead, it is now three, and Mark Norden is eyeing up Ainsley Bowsfield, who has failed to get past Pete Sparrow. Now, therefore, what can Norden do? We're not even halfway yet, no. coming through Coppice. The three race leaders plus the reigning champion now will get a measure of the pace of Alec Graham. Downside is he might distract Mark Norton by attacking him. No, I don't think so. I think these guys are, um, are experienced enough, so they know that Graham's not going to muck about and be stupid. And as I, as I rightly said, Graham then helped Norden to catch up, get in the toe, and then Norden is on a right mission. Again, doing fastest lap, um, 46 dead. So a little bit slower than the race pace, actually. 45-0 um, was the pole time, so a second off in qualifying but um, but doing okay 
but his lap he's just done was a 45 0, so he's now on yes, to that 45 yeah. pace. He now has just matched yeah. the apologies the, for that. The toe was there, I think, for him. So, Ainsley Bowsfield could not get past Pete Sparrow. What can Mark Norton do? He's worked his way up into contention, he's worked his way past Bowsfield, and so now the second car in shot as they come down through the crane of curves. That of Mark Norton is going for the race lead. Is he going to do it on the way into the old hairpin? We will wait and see. Yes, he's going to make the move. Yeah, he's going to done it. So, oh, no, he hasn't. It's just <laughs> eagerly. So remember, they're not braking for that corner. They literally are just literally lifting off ever so slightly, flinging the wheel to the right and getting back on the power again without scrubbing up too much time on those tyres. And while Mark Norton was doing that, he's delayed his run out of the old half into Ainsley Bowsfield. He's passed him. Yeah. Now that was as they just gone past a still yellow flag. I would wonder whether or not that whether or not that was a legit move. To be honest, we can't see a wave yellow on that camera shot. So you can see that he's letting is he going to let him go again and be sensible because then the officials mm. may say to him okay you're letting go again but no it doesn't look like it so not happening, is it? see they're, they're they're right in the zone you know they're in that 2cb zone that they don't even see the flags really important as a driver that you do keep an eye out for the flag signals it's there for the marshal safety and and obviously every driver um, on the circuit safety as well so under yellows you must not overtake and um, if you do you must sort of let that position go as quickly as possible if you've made a slight mistake. Mark Norton's on the attack, back up the inside of the chicane. He goes second once again. We've got nine and a half minutes to go. It's still looking good as though Norton could take the win, but Pete Sparrow he is underlining why he is the real master of this sort of racing. Over the line they come, multiple champion. He's been a feature of race wins in these cars on previous Motors TV live race days. And as they come over the line, the gap three tenths of a second between the top two, nine tenths of a second covers the three leaders. And the driver in this, who's probably got the biggest frustration, is Alec Graham, who is proving that he can match their pace. But of course, he's many laps down. As now, Norton goes for the lead. He's on the inside at Hollywood. It's like watching it in slow motion. They are level. They are pretty much together coming through the corner. And Mark Norton will get his yeah. nose in front on the inside but, but then he's on the outside for the next part can he stay alongside down to the old hairpin is there a gap on the inside it's time for a big deep breath and here he comes and he's done it look uh, at some, that some great footage there from the onboards coming out of the old hairpin norden's just taken the lead but now his momentum is now going to be hampered all the way up swanch curve into the mclean's corner you can see the leader um sorry the our camera card just pushing him now physically pushing that's normally called um a love nudge or a kiss um, rubbing his racing, so all good stuff. We're loving this 2CB action. You know, never underestimate these guys, as I said at the beginning of the of the show and the commentary. This is going to be brilliant. I'm, I love these these things. They're, they're great. Love it. Absolutely. And there's another race still to come, and there are eight more minutes of this one. Mark Norden is the race leader. There's a back marker ahead of them now. We do get a slipstream in 2CB racing, don't we? Yeah, we do, and you're seeing it now. You can see literally the car is getting pulled along by Norden. Norden is, is punching into the dirty air, and then we've got an overtake now, but it's on the outside of the chicane. It's probably not going to stick. Is it? Is it not? No, it's not. So oh. these guys are now battling. I told you Norden was an aggressive driver. Then he's going to push him onto the, onto the rumble strips on the exit. Great entry speed and great exit speed, considering that our camera car, Pete Sparrow, was actually on the proper racing line and Mark had to defend in the lead. Again, the toe, look at this, absolutely unbelievable toe. Is he gonna Whoa. block it? No, he's right on the inside. This is definitely gonna be a move that sticks. So now you know why he's been champion over the years in the number 97 car. And while these two are towing each other around, they brought Bowsfield back up with them, haven't they? So it's still three for the lead. Now in this type of racing, and now we've seen how the toe works, can you buy your time? Can you think, do you know I'm going to sit here until it's the last lap and then make my move, or is it too competitive for that? I think these guys, because it's a sprint race today, on the 24-hour race, yeah, they, you see them sitting behind each other for lap after lap, and then after 24 hours, that this was exactly the same image, not necessarily the same people, but the same image over a 24-hour race. Four cars dicing for the lead was just unbelievable. So um, here we are, coming up the hill. Working really hard. The engine absolutely on its on the limit. Um, being built by Sammy Critchley, who the young lady will be driving later on, getting close to the curve on the inside at McLean's. No change to the engine though. Through the right hander, yep. still absolutely flat. Mark Norton to the inside. Pete Sparrow, the leader. Ainsley Bowsfield waiting for it to end in tears. Norton up the inside, all over the curve. They can lean on each other. Brilliant. Just about Pete Sparrow gets lent on. He's on the outside line, and Mark Norton 
has his nose in front, and Bathfield's got past a pair of them. Look at this. And I feel so sorry for Alec Graham, the championship winning car, because he sat there, can't really get involved because he's not part of the race, but he's going, come on, guys, I want to see part of this action. So absolutely unbelievable stuff from these three and extra number one car who's come out the pits late. Third different leader, Ainsley Bowsfield, is going to head them across the line this time. If it wasn't serious before, it's getting ever more serious because we've got less than six minutes to go over the timing line. It is Ainsley Bowsfield up front there, Mark Gordon second, and we're down to third with Pete Sparrow over the line. He's going to get a toe off Norden. Norden gets a toe off Bowsfield. Here comes Sparrow to the outside. Is he going to go through the middle? That would be a brave move, wouldn't it? No. So Norden just hangs on to it there. So they're, they're, all, they're all giving each other a nice bit of room. And at the same time, they are still running wide and bouncing over the yeah. curves, but still giving each other a lot of respect. So um, great driving from all of these three drivers. And astonishingly, even though they're so busy batting, they're not being caught by the fourth place man, Liam Davis. Uh, he is lapping a fair chunk slower because he's having his own battle, I suspect. And that's going against him as they work their way now down to the old hairpin. There's a gap on the inside, but Sparrow not really close enough to take advantage of that. Runs a little bit wide onto the curve. You just saw the brake lights there of, uh, of Norden, the car that we're um, looking at in front of us there. You just saw him dab the brakes into the old hairpin to get the car, get the weight distribution of the car slightly unbalanced to then point the front in the right direction. Again, another great tow. Is he going to outbreak him on the inside? So is he going to lift off? As you slightly lift off, turn the wheel in, and a great move on the inside of uh, the McLean's there. And it's all uphill that as well, so you can see how important that tow or slipstream is. You're going to have to define outbreak in a car in which you don't want the problem to break. Yes, yeah, OK, I need to work on that one. <laughs> yes, the out flat out of it or something. So Pete Sparrow is back into the lead, and four and a half minutes of the race remain. Martin Norton is there in second place, but you still get the feeling that either of them are content to go for it on the last lap. Alec Graham, when we get to race two, will be a factor, won't he? He's proved yeah. the pace of the car now. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking, looking forward to seeing that a little bit later on. Four more minutes remain. The leaders are en masse coming over the line, and it's Pete Sparrow with Martin Gordon alongside him and Ainsley Bowsfield behind him. Look at this, three abreast into the chicane. Bits hanging off the front of Wayne Cowling's car, number two, as he comes over the line. He's got with him there 33 just up the road ahead. Glenn Oswin, who's gained the place on that lap. Mark Gordon leads, does he, at Redgate? Yes, and Pete Sparrow is almost in the car with him. Yeah, another little love touch there, or kiss, whatever, however you want to talk about it. Different drivers use different phrases. Again, pushing the car down Craner Curve. They literally are pretty much attached. So, flat out, no engine change at all. Craner Curve, very, very famous corner, a real undulation of the car there at speed. Dab the brakes, flick the car in to get the back end to point you in the right direction. And you can see the car's absolutely moving around, weaving around underneath them with that famous Citroen suspension underneath these cars that have been very well oiled over the years. And these tyres are the same tyres they used at the 24-hour race for 24 hours last year. So they've been sat in a garage, none of all these tyre warmers or, or worried about being flat spotted or temperatures, different temperatures going through them. These are the cars, they roll them out, they fill them up with oil, they check that they're all tight and stuff, and then they just send them back out again. And look what we're seeing now. We're witnessing some really good driving from some very, very basic, um, sort of old cars. If you want low-cost, ultra-competitive racing, this is it, isn't it? Out of coppice comes Pete Sparrow. You find people that come into 2CB racing never race anything else, and why would they need to when you can do this kind of yeah. racing on this amount of money? Exactly. So Norton's got a bit of a, a bit of a gap now, so be interesting to see. I think Sparrow's still within a good distance to get back into the toe again. You can see that um, Alec Graham has overtaken our, um, our third-place yeah. driver of Bounce Field, number 80. So he's obviously got a little bit impatient and thought, well, I'm quicker than you, let me crack on. So he'll be um, using this as a bit of a test session. And another little battle coming up into the chicane a bit further back down the field. Yeah, that's for fourth. Liam Davies ahead of Richard Lambert, who's on the front row. And then behind is what's left of Wayne Cowling's car. And he, in turn, is being given a hard time uh, by Matthew Hollis in car 10 as they come through. This is Pete Sparrow's view. We've got one more lap at the end of this, I would suggest, looking at the clock. And you just had a gear change there as well. The gear change on these vehicles are um, slightly peculiar. It's a little bit like um, like the instrument of a trombone, when you sort of push and pull. It's on the actual main dash, and you twist it like a, like a sort of a pivot, a pivot push and pull gear knob. It's not just your conventional gear knob that you see in a normal a normal everyday car. So a very peculiar gear change on the two CVs. What are you trying to say? They don't have paddle shift. 
They don't have paddle shift, oh, no, or traction control, <laughs> or, or probably windscreen wiper, I don't know, but um, don't need it today. So a great day here at Donington, and some wicked racing from the two CVs. Absolutely, and just to throw something else into the melting pot, we've got a lap to go at the end of this, and look what's up the road, back markers. Back markers, so these guys are going to be using those back markers, unless they're stupidly slow, or slower, um, down the back straight. So you can see one back marker is letting them go, they both let them go. So then Norden now can't use them, to, yeah. to get that toe from them and sort of use them on the way through. So we've got a wide line there, heard a gear change there. It's pretty much a flat shift as well, as quickly as possible to not lose any engine momentum or revs at all. No, David, they haven't got paddles. <laughs> Down so towards getting... the chicane. Here's Sparrow, look, he gets the toe, but the only option is the outside line. Because Norden's a wily, wily oh. fox. He knows what the score is, and he flings it in. Right, then left, over the rumble strips. That's a slight vibration noise that you can hear and then and completing another lap, 33 seconds remaining. And it's three for the lead once again, because look, Bowsfield's blue car has caught back up with them, plus this constant shadow of Alec Graham. He may be three laps back, but he proved that he can be a race winner later in the day. Now, Pete Sparrow is going to have to be a bit toey here and get past, isn't he? He can't afford to sit there for much longer. The danger is not only does he let Norton go for the lead, he might even get mugged for second place. Ainsley Bowsfield must have had a toe last time down Starkey Strait because he's now done the fastest lap of the race, quicker than anybody went to qualify. So it's yep. game on between the top three on this, the last lap. I think those are the, the back markers that would have definitely helped him out. Mark uh, Norden going slightly wide there on the exit of Craners, using every inch of tarmac and being very defensive on the way. And you can see the back fighting the steering wheel on this 2CV, going through the old hairpin, maybe doing around 50 odd miles an hour, I'm guessing, through there. Flat to the floor in fourth gear, hearing that. That engine sounding like a bit like a like a sewing machine, sort of purring away there. Bless it, really is working very very hard. Now braking slightly, back on again, back on the power again, getting the car to change direction as best you can without losing momentum. Mark going wide on the exit of McLean's. Gets away with it though. The leading three cars then, covered by a string of French onions. They come through coffees. You've got just up front Mark Gordon, Pete Sparrow behind him, trying to attack and defend at the same time. Ainsley Bowsfield third. Now he makes his move. He may have gone a bit early there, swinging out of coppice. He's almost level with Sparrow, but we've only got the chicane to go. So now, any of these three could win. Ignore the car in the background of Alec Graham. Norden defends the inside. Bowsfield tries to go for a gap in the middle. Sparrow standing his ground on the outside, down to the chicane. Bowsfield. Who breaks latest? Bowsfield up the inside. He's done it. How about that? Oh, my God. Brilliant move. When it counts, he's ahead of the chicane. Is he going to get mugged on the run to the line, or can he hang on in there? From third to first, the flag is out. It's a win for Ainsley Bowsfield. Fantastic drive. Absolutely brilliant. From third, just chilling out at the back there, all of a sudden to go and take the lead at the last corner. And this is the battle that goes on a little bit further down the field. David. Wayne Cowling in car two just comes through ahead there. Right with him as they power up towards the line is Glenn Oswin. So Ainsley Bowsfield wins. Mark Norton second, Pete Sparrow third, fourth to Liam Davis, fifth goes to Matthew Hollis, and Wayne Cowling in number two takes sixth position. And Ainsley Bowsfield really did drive a very intelligent race, didn't he? Because you could see the way that he was quite prepared to let those two battle, and he would just stay with them, and he towed himself back up, and proved he'd got the speed, and he made that move coming out of Coffees on the last lap, and was able to go from third to first. Fantastic drive. There he is, Ainsley Bowsfield is the race winner, and we will, of course, see that car driven by Stephen Panis later on. It's his only race of the day, and Ainsley Bowsfield is the winner. So Ainsley Bowsfield takes the race win, gaps, if you care, 0.173 of a second between him and Mark Norden, and then 0.2 of a second back, Pete Sparrow in third. Fourth, Leon Davis, Matthew Hollis fifth, and Wayne Cowling comes home in sixth. Each of those top three cars have a different driver for race two, something to look forward to later. We'll be back after the break. We're here at Donington Park for another Motors TV live race day. Hopefully you enjoyed the 2CV action. We certainly did. And we have to say congratulations to Ainsley Bowsfield, who is here and our winner. That was a fantastic race. Well, it probably looked more like a, a game of chess rather than the motor race. Um, I was lucky I got away at the start. The two of us, Pete Sparrow and I, were travelling around quite well together. And then another car joined it and it was a bit of a mayhem in every corner, really. But I just hanged back into the end, trying to work out where I was quickest. And luckily it paid off.
We saw all four of you just sort of battling it out. Alec Graham there, who'd been lapped several times and came out late from the pits, uh, also getting in on the action as well. So he made it as a backmarker even more difficult. Well, Alec Graham's our current champion. He won the championship last year, so he is very quick. I don't know if he had a problem, but when he came out into the mix, uh, it made it even more exciting. Um, I knew Alec wasn't going to take any silly moves because obviously we'd lapped him, but it was great to have another car for a bit of an extra excitement. Well, so it certainly was exciting. Uh, I know that your trophy and champagne and laurels are here waiting to go. And I'll tell you what, guys, both there for David and Charlie, I absolutely much. would Thank love you. to be racing in two CVs. They look so much fun. And uh, you, can, you can just tell by the look of the car um, that Ainsley's just bought in here. It's had a little bit of damage to it, hasn't it, over the way? Yeah, it won a 24 hour race there. Five, six years ago, so we've kept it as it is. It seems a shame to restore it, doesn't it? And so, um, so all the uh, drivers on the door there have raced in the car before, and it's actually a team gadget car, so it's nice to bring the, the laurels back for team gadget. Well, congratulations, well done. I'll let you go and get prepared. Another two CV race coming up, 20 more fun filled minutes for you a little later on, and we've got the BMWs coming up next so that's all good stuff as we just have a look around this fantastic car and uh, and as Ainsley just gets ready so Charlie uh, what do you reckon any chances of us getting involved in the 2CV action 24-hour race surely we can get some sort of celebrity jaunt going on well, that'd be great fun, wouldn't it? So David's looking at me, jumping up and down next to me in the commentary <laughs> booth, going, yeah, get me, I want one, I want one. But uh, what a fantastic race that we've seen there. Down to the chicane comes Stephen Panis, the man on pole position. Peter Rundle is the man alongside him for this. And so as the cars turn their way into the chicane, if you were with us earlier on in the day, you'll know how fun Citroen 2CV racing can be. It's ultra close, it's ultra competitive, it's clean racing, it's done on a shoestring budget, but it always delivers plenty of action. It's time to go racing as the 2CVs, with a surge of power, burst out of the chicane, head up towards the line and accelerate honestly down towards Redgate Stephen Panis bags the lead Alec Graham on the inside then challenging as they head down towards the right hander for the first time almost a bit of leaning on one another Peter Rundle on the outside line there as they turn their way into the corner and through the right hander they go at Redgate with Stephen Panis in car 80 coming out up front here we've got Sammy Critchley there on the right hand side with the seal lion red car that's on the inside here at Craner Curves now she is very very experienced bit of contact as we can see there from the fourth, fifth and sixth place, guys, third, fourth and fifth guys around Craner Curve. So it's um, hotting up already to be a fantastic another 2CV race. I'm not going to put any money on anyone until it gets to the, I don't know, the eighth minute or so in the race. But um, even though it can still change. I thought we were going to say the last corner, really, because that's probably the only time it's going to be clear. But as they work their way out of the old hairpin, at the rear of the field there, 50, Ian Arnold this time at the wheel of the car. Right, for the race lead, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six-ish. All Everyone. in a clump. Everyone, All of them, really, All yeah. Of them. And Alec Graham, it is the reigning champion who is up front. There's a really sideways Simon Clark in car two, flings it through the corner. Sammy Fritchley taking over from Pete Sparrow in 97, going to the inside line. But number one in P1, Alec Graham leads as they go through Coppice. I reckon it was six in a clump at McLean's. It's more than that now, though. Looks seven or eight coming out of Coppies Corner for the first time. Now the slipstream should work. Yeah, this is really, really important. These cars are so underpowered, as um, everybody knows. They're famous for, for not being the quickest race cars around a race circuit. Everyone ridicules them, but they really do put in some fantastic races. Uh, these are literally wheeled out of the garage, check that the wheel nuts are all tight, and then already showing brilliant action here at, at Donington Park. So Alec Graham in the car number one, won the 24-hour race three times on the trot, getting a bad run out of the chicane there and being swamped by the gold and blue livery cars of the of the team that are just about to swamp him on the way into Redgate. Look at this, four, five, six, seven at least for the race lead. Down they come, in towards Redgate corner. Stephen Panis doesn't really know which way to go to defend in the blue car. Round the outside comes Peter Rundle there, 57. Alec Graham is in third as they work their way onto the top of the crane of curves. And this is Sammy Fritchley's view as they go in towards Hollywood. That was the car that led the bulk of race one. And just a little bit further up the road there, Simon Clark doesn't know which way to go. Look at that, weaving left and then right. That's not to defend, that's to try and find a gap. Yeah, she's very, very experienced as well, Sammy. She prepares a lot of the engines for um, some of the grid on the on the race, but she's um, really, really on it through um, the old hairpin. It, just look at this, it's just unbelievable. This is proper action, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Okay, at 55 miles an hour-ish, 
but at the same time they are flat out hardly lifting off the throttle at all to get the car unbalanced before they turn in for each of the corners it looks like a rolling start but genuinely yeah. these are side by side track battles going up towards mclean's as number one goes a little bit wide alec graham and that leaves the door wide open then up the inside tries to go peter rundle and now this sammy fritchley's view she's got a really good run up the inside in fact it wasn't rundle it was simon clark in the sister car ahead through copies big bite of curb <laughs> clark gets sideways hangs on to it leaning almost on alec graham they may not be the quickest cars but they certainly deliver great racing fritchley to the inside three wide down to the chicane one off in the background that i think is steve jakes in 43 from the fifth row of the grid who's gone 2cb crossing back onto the circuit leaders into the chicane this is the end of lap number two and i'm already tired <laughs> i don't know about you but these guys are really putting on a fantastic show for us here today so we've got four or five abreast as it was coming up through mclean's now out of the chicane to start the next lap 11 minutes remaining fastest lap at the moment is a 147.6 on lap two by davies and rundle the 57 car and they're starting to even out a little bit more now but still going to be using each other's toes as they're underpowered they do need to get sucked along by the car in front that's breaking the the, the the sort of the wall of air so they can get aerodynamically past them on the way through to the to the pass on the next lap the recovering Steve Jakes rounds Radgate, also involved in that battle behind 36. The car in the hands of Chris Tovey for this second race, diving down through the Craner curves. Up front, when they came over the line last time, Peter Rundle was the leader. Stephen Panis in second place, Alec Graham third. Sammy Fritchley runs fourth, or ran fourth over the timing line, but it can change on any corner, on any lap. It's a squeal of tyres at the old hairpin. Whoops, somebody's run way, way wide there. 55, I fear that may have been Nick Clark. Yeah, it was back onto the road and about to lose a place this for the race lead peter rundle goes round the outside through the corner right on his tail is stephen panis and look at this for third place alec graham in number one is being muscled out sammy fritchley's up to third simon clark in number two fourth ish i say ish because still with him is graham and graham breaks later round the outside gets back the place yeah unbelievable just just sort of defies all physics of any <laughs> race craft in these things you know they're literally just lifting off the throttle momentarily, getting back on the power again to keep the momentum going, you know. It's just fantastic. The gear shift on these vehicles is very, very peculiar. It's on the center, uh, the dash of the car. It's a little stick that you pull towards you and push away from you, twist it around. It's very, very easy to get in the wrong gear as well. So um, a fine art in getting in the right gear. They're mainly in third or two wheels on my wagon as they car number 10 goes through the chicane. That was Matthew Hollis. Matthew Hollis, yeah. He survived that pretty well. Yeah, he did. So the gears are very, very tricky to get. Um, that alone, they're not even really making contact with each other and providing great racing. The first and second place have got slightly away though, so um, can they help each other move away from the rest of the pack? The one to watch is Sammy Fritchley now, because that is a car in a big, big hurry. Sammy Fritchley catching the top two. Another battle to be resolved rounding Redgate. You've got Matthew Hollis fighting still with 33, which is the uh, car in the hands of Glenn Oswin down through the Craner curves they come Oswin then on the outside wrong place to be for that part of the Craners it's the right place to be for the next deep breath up the inside no doesn't think about it slots no. back in behind so you've got at the moment Peter Rundle leading the way Stephen Panis is in second place and then Sammy Fritchley third catching them that car has done the least slow lap of the race yeah she's um she is on an absolute absolute mission in this on this pack and we've got she's under threat though we've got neil Dorn. it's all it's all changing i can't even keep up myself david <laughs> right, i'll have another deep breath at the end of the lap and see what the order is it's almost pointless giving it to you because it changes on every corner but this is sammy fritchley's view now third at the start of the lap i reckon she's dropped back a little bit coming now through coppice again the toe can work against you but up front We've got five in a line. Here they come. And it is Peter Rundle in 57 leading the way. Stephen Panis there, second in the blue car. Alec Graham is third, fourth, Simon Clark. So Sammy Fritchley has dropped back. Panis to the inside line as they break for the chicane. Is that going to give him the race lead? No, lots of task wheel. Rundle bounces over the kerb. Does that compromise the exit speed coming across the timing line? Yes, yes it does. Yes, it will do, yeah. Stephen Panis is right there in the wheel tracks. But the only way to go really is to the outside and it's not the ideal place look at that the inside line well and truly covered to begin with alec graham i think is going to get this around the outside of all of them he's got a two-car toe there they're weaving on each other and he's looking very very hot to trot around the outside of redgate to take back second place but the cars are so evenly matched yeah. it's going to change again as they come through craner curves so um so so all great stuff but it's so close but there's no silliness there's no bumping there's no, no. pushing 
everybody knows that this is low cost racing and they all are appreciative of everybody else's budget and if I can't afford to go racing with much money nor can anybody else they think and therefore they know what damage can do to your season. Down well, towards the old happy. They're holding each other up now. Sammy, yeah. uh, no, she's quite an aggressive person. She doesn't take any um, any prisoners lightly, and she was having to lift off and break there because all of these guys are falling over themselves. She obviously couldn't go out of the line or out of the toe, so then she was then squabbling around. So maybe just saving the tyres, keeping the temperature down as best as, she, as possible to maybe do a, a late lunge, which we saw in the earlier race. The lead changed at the last minute, didn't it? So. Frustrating for her being in fourth or fifth place at the moment, fifth place, but um, at the same time, I think she's going to be um, doing a move very, very soon. I like this idea of saving the tyres, yeah, for another season, because yeah. you can make them last forever, can't you, with these? I think these are on from last yeah, year. Precisely. So, yeah, so yes. maybe, maybe, yes, yeah, sorry. Another year, yeah. another two years, maybe. Right, that's why they go onto two wheels, save a bit of rubber. Out of coppice, <laughs> down to the chicane, you're riding on board with Sammy Fritchley, fifth. Ahead is Simon Clark, who was the least slow driver last time through. 145.4 was the best lap of the race. Alec Graham hasn't yet led, but he does now. Graham leads into the chicane. Rundle slips back into second. Panas third, fourth car two. Simon Clark, Sammy Fritchley, not really very content being in fifth. And she makes a move on the outside as Clark makes a move on the outside of Panas. Five for the race lead as they come over the line. Six more minutes to go. So you saw her then, she was beside the guys, then she thought, no, I'm not going to pass them, get back in the tow again, and it's really important to get stuck behind somebody, to get pulled along, dragged along, and um, back through that. As you can see, though, they actually break, they do break here around Donington Park, so uh, great observation there with the brake lights coming up, and we're following Mr Bumble in front with the blue 2CV round crane. It's flat to the floor, absolutely pinned, that engine working absolutely flat out. Do you want to go for the move there? She lifts off. Yes, she does go for the move on the inside, up over the kerbs, proper touring car style um, racing lines. She's going to cut back on the inside now, keeping the momentum going. Cars just sound ever so smooth over the rumble strips. It's not a, not a nasty vibration sound there at all. Ever so smooth. And then again, flat out in fourth gear, climbing up the hill into Swanch Curve. Not lifting at all. Listen to the engine revs. Doesn't change at all. And <laughs> doesn't change at all again. So it keeps exactly the same all the way through that, that very tri twisty section. The one that braked at Redgate was Simon Clark. He's got some explaining to do as to why he's suddenly become a Nancy and decided to brake going into a corner. <laughs> he's dropped back a place because there on the inside, Stephen Panis goes through. The race leader is Alec Graham, but he can't shake them off. There's this swarm behind him. Down they come towards the chicane. You're back on board with Sammy Fritchley. She started the lap fifth. She's kind of four and a half at the moment because she's almost alongside them as they head in towards the chicane. Peter Rundle is in second, looks and then thinks better of it, slots back in. Hannah's third, Fritchley fourth, up the inside. She takes the plate in number 97. Here they come, up towards the line. So car 97 goes fourth. She could still win this, four minutes to go. Oh yeah, easily, yeah, no, definitely. But um, Alec, uh, Graham, Three times 24 hour Le Mans, well, 2CV Le Mans winner, as it were, should I say? Not Le Mans, 24 hour, what am I talking about? Um, very, very keen to win after his disastrous first race by starting in the pit lane, but proved that he had the pace by tagging onto the front pack. Um, Sammy, very, very experienced engine builder and driver, is not going to let this um, go live lightly. So, flat to the floor. Let's have a listen to the engine revs. I won't talk you over it, just have a listen. flat to the floor, slight lift, turn the wheel, back on the power again. Panas ahead goes a little bit wide and uses the curve, so did Sammy Fritchley, so nothing really gained out of all of that. Up front still, Alec Graham leads the way. It's a real slog up the hill. Yeah. Fritchley passed though, because that was Simon Clark round the outside at Schwartz, the inside for McLean's job done. She's kept it flat though as well, she didn't lift, the guy got up on the inside, normally you'd break and go down a gear in most cars, but she actually <laughs> kept it fully lit with somebody passing it on the inside. Fantastic racing from these five up at the front of this 2CV race here at Donington Park. Whoop, Whoa. Simon Clark has a real moment, oh, Sammy Fritchley gets Princeton delayed in all of that. Crikey, if you've ever watched a car get it wrong in slow motion, that was it, Simon Clark came across the road. But he sorts himself out and he's still going and he's still in this leading group, but it has just yep. broken them up a bit. Yeah, broken a toe and still didn't lift as well as he went sideways, <laughs> kept it completely flat. Sammy went wide in sympathy and kept it flat, not to lose any momentum on these leaders because it's really important that they stay close together to get the toe from each other and get that aerodynamic pull and get sucked along down the straight. 
Two and a half minutes remain. Stephen Pannis in the blue car third has now done the least slow lap of the race. So it's three for the race lead. Alec Graham is ahead as they come to Redgate. But Pannis in the car that won race one, don't forget. He's kind of doing a similar thing. Because now to the inside goes Peter Rundle. And he does find a gap on the inside at Redgate. And Stephen Pannis wants to go with him in the all blue car there. And what I love is there's no contact. There's yeah, exactly. just absolutely no contact at all. Probably the wheel arch may fall off if you did touch it. But at the same time, you know, it really is absolutely brilliant but commentators um curse probably no contact but these guys do respect each other a lot and um love their racing so alec graham down to second place the reigning champion can he fight back from there the answer should be yes but he's got to attack and defend it. He does attack right round the outside, going through Schwantz. Peter Rundle had the advantage. Alec Graham surges up alongside him and goes all the way round the outside and takes over the lead. Up towards McLean's they come. That was a really good pass, especially climbing uphill. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, lot steeper on the outside edge there as well. So that 2CV of Graham had to really, really struggle even more around the outside edge because it is very, very steep if you ever walk or cycle around the track or even drive it if you're experienced and watching at home. So again, another move, another change for the lead. This is going to go down to the wire. Got a minute and 13 seconds left. So I'm predicting one more lap after this. Definitely one more lap after this. As, and it's um, going to be four for the lead, I think, at the start of it. You can almost discount Simon Clark, but Sammy Fritchley is almost tagged back onto the back of them. Here they come into the chicane. Who's going to be Peter, the bravest? Peter under the lead. Oh, oh, gets it all wrong. Gravel oh. curve Just off. Grass, tarmac, still in the lead. Still in the lead. Brilliant. <laughs> Kept it flat. The suspension didn't even notice what had just happened there. Just went over that gravel. Just, just like a magic carpet, just flew over it. The only difference is it's a bit grubbier now, that's all, but he's got to go defensive. Alec Graham to the inside. Stephen Pannis has got himself ahead. He had the momentum going yeah. down towards Redgate. Fritchley to the outside as they come into the corner. There's a gear change there as well from fourth into third, then back on the power again. So you heard the, uh, the minimal changing gear. You might, may hear it again. Yep, just then into fourth gear, yep. So four for the lead. This, the last lap. The clock will hit zero as they get to the bottom of the hill. Alec Graham looking a bit toey then. Whoop, trying to make a gap. A little yep. nudge between the two. <laughs> Down they come. Old hairpin, last lap. Sammy Fritchley waiting to see what kicks off ahead of her through the old hairpin. But any one of these four could win. Yeah, any one of them could win. And they, they are just dabbing the brake slightly, I presume, on the left hand. Just a bit of left foot braking as they're going into the corners to get the car unbalanced. Graham oh. really is, as I said, no contact at all. Perfect. This this gets um, fantastic coverage here from these um, these three fighting for the lead. Gap on the inside. Sammy Fritchley didn't quite have the momentum to get up the inside there. Rundle goes wide, drops to third, went over the curb. That was a Rundle strip, possibly, he went over. <laughs> now, Fritchley to the inside line for third place at Coppice. Stephen Pannis leads. Alec Graham is second. Peter Rundle third. Sammy Fritchley running out of options here to get into the top three. But is it going to be a double win for car 80? Ainsley Bousfield used it to win race one. Stephen Pannis leads race two. Last lap, chicane. Here they come. Sammy Fritchley dropping back a little bit here, but Alec, Alec Graham. Graham goes to the inside. There's just yes. about a gap. He's got the momentum. He's got the inside line. Can he turn in ahead? Yes, he can. He's done it, I think, at the last corner. What a Out move. of the chicane. Here they come up towards the line. Panas has to defend second place onto the grass, goes Peter Rundle. But Alec Graham comes across the line. Check and flag. Sammy Fritchley's level for third place and, and just gets, gets third. Just gets it. What a brilliant race. Well done to you four. Perfect. Alec Graham is the winner. The leading four covered by six tenths of a second. Alec Graham wins, Stephen Panner second, Sammy Fritchley third. She was 94 thousandths uh, ahead of Peter Rundle. Fifth has gone to Simon Clark. Sixth to Matthew Hollis. And this battle, as they come into the chicane, Ian Arnold doing his level best to hang on to position. There's Steve Jakes that we saw on the grass early on, and he too is trying to hang on to position from 42 Mike Story up towards the timing line they come. Checker flag flies as over the line now goes Steve Jakes to be 12th and Mike Story in 13th place. Can't we have a third race for the two CVs, please? Alec Graham richly deserved that, and you can see why he's a champion, can't you? Yeah, that was just unbelievable. He was very, very um, boisterous through the crane of curves there when I said there was no contact. Only a tiny little bit of rubbing, as rubbing is racing, the phrase we use now and again. There he is waving his arm in delight. Fantastic race. They should be very, very proud of themselves yeah. putting on that show and like your tweets you've been getting throughout the day, David, <laughs> saying, when are we getting more 2CV racing? Hopefully those of you at home that have been tweeting David and watching this will be going, yeah, we've now had our second dose and helping of the day. 
Well, tremendous racing as ever. And let's just confirm the way they came over the line. Alec Graham, the winner, by three tenths of a second from Stephen Pannis in second place. Sammy Fritchley third ahead of Peter Randall. Fifth goes the way of Simon Clark, Matthew Hollis in sixth place. Time for a deep breath at Donington and a break. Yes, this is our live Motors TV race day at Donington Park. Congratulations to Alec Graham. Alec, 2CB specialist, you've won three times in the 24-hour race and adding today to your title. Congratulations. Well, thanks very much. Thanks very much. We didn't have a great start to the season. We, uh, we had to come in even before the first race started. So uh, today's made up for it, really, this afternoon. Very good. And the conditions out there, as we can just hear the BMWs going around to start their race, is it rubbering up nicely? Oh, the track's, the track's really lovely, yeah, yeah. There's even some grip on the grass, so uh, <laughs> it's not too bad, not too bad. It's amazing, these two CVs spun grip in the most unlikely of places. Let's bring on your laurel, your uh, champagne and your tumbler to celebrate. Congratulations well, goes out to Alec Gray winning well, the ECAS well, 2CV well, Parts.com well, Championship. Got your, uh, thanks very much. Well done.